This adventure starts in my backyard, Miami. The hub of international trade and home to some of the best fishing in the world. With nonstop action and quality fish all day long. But sometimes, it's fun to go exploring the fertile waters of the Bahamas, just a stone's throw away, to experience a slightly different playground, filled with adventure, adrenaline, good food, and oh, great fishing. Beautiful fishing! <laughs> Uncharted Waters with Peter Miller is presented by Salt Life. Only 50 miles from Miami lies the island of Bimini, a great area to catch some of the best eating fish on the planet. But before any trip to the Bahamas, I always have to give my hometown waters a shot. On this trip, I'll be joined by my buddies Clark Bergner and Ben Sharp. The first order of business on any fishing adventure is to catch bait, and I have a tendency to over-prepare. We're out here looking for live ballyhoo right now. They're, they're here to the right, going towards the marker. They're getting closer, you chumming? Yes, sir. He's going in the distance. He's going for speed. After a bunch of good throws in my cast net, I felt confident that we'd have what we need to get the job done. Beautiful. Gotcha. <laughs> That was called over the next shot. But we're gonna throw up two kites, and then we'll put a couple of flat lines off the other side, two to three baits. So at the end, we might be fishing eight to nine baits. So at that point, if we can't catch a fish, we don't deserve to be out here. <laughs> we add small balloons to the back of each kite in case the kite line breaks. By doing so, the kites will then float when they hit the water. These kites require at least 10 knots of wind to fly. Ben and I aren't having any luck launching them. You know, it's funny, I feel like I have winds. Just pulling them forward so we get the kite up high enough, the wind's really light. So now I stabilize it, we lock it down and see what it's gonna do. But it's definitely not pulling on me, like, at all. I'm gonna have to go helium. Ben always comes prepared and brought his helium tank. When we have light wind conditions, we use it to fill giant balloons which we affix to the back of the kite. When you can't get your kite baits out and you know you're gonna be messing around with things, your best bet is to put a bait out the other side. So basically put in this little live bait clip. If we get a bite, it's gonna pop off and let the fish run with it. And now we say a prayer to the fish gods. The great thing about kite fishing is that it enables you to cover a ton of water by spreading your baits out over an area, sometimes even larger than a football field. We're gonna be suspending baits. So as we reel this away, you can see the cork going up in the air. The leader is 15 feet and the bait is right on the surface. It takes a little bit of preparation, but once you've got it set up, it works out really well. Double header, Ben's on two, Clark's on triple. Feels like Benita's. Ah, look at Clark up there, he's got a little captain in him, you see that? Oh yeah. Can you get that leg up? He's tail wrapped, we both got him. Look at that, he's making white water. Clark wants to know who caught it. We both did. So let me see, how many hooks are in his mouth? No way, he ate both? He ate both. Oh, probably ate mine way down. Okay. Put him in the Yeti. Beautiful. Good night. Come on, Ben. Come on, Ben. It's always exciting. You got to treat every fish like it's a trophy. <laughs> and it looks like another bonehead. <laughs> Headbanger's ball. Right in the shoulders. Shut it. A lot of stuff going on around here. Nine baits out. I feel like I just got ate by a shark. You think? This one's getting busted on. Look at Peter up there. Ooh, that sound, huh? Is that a cobia? Cobia! I cannot believe it. I haven't caught a cobia in so long. He's getting close, man. He's coming at us. Just because you're hooked up with a fish doesn't mean that you can disregard the other baits. That's a nice one, right? Beauty. How big? 40? 30, 40. What? We got a trophy! Sailfish! Got a sail on the long. Oh my god, it's a Christmas miracle. We're tripled up. Sailfish is still tight? 
I can't do much with the kite. We're coming a little fast. All right, the fish is floating on the surface. <clears throat> Look at this, Ben with a sailfish on. Here we go. Oh, big boy in the house. Oh, that is a celebratory fish right there, baby. No big deal, we're just gonna reel on our sailfish <laughs> while we got our Kobe on. <sighs> Woo! Clark, you see this thing? That's a beauty, bro. I'm gonna try to bring him to the front cooler. Mm. Let's go. Bring it in there. Oh, beautiful. 110 fish. quart Yeti right there, and he's sticking out of I both sides. I think we need a bigger Yeti. Woo! Things are going better than expected, guys. Uncharted Waters with Peter Miller is presented by Salt Life. Live salty. Citizen. Better starts now. Tire America. Your tires, your way. Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. With a nice cobia in the Yeti, Clark working on a giant mystery fish, with Ben simultaneously fighting a sailfish, what more could you ask for? All right, we're gonna chase after this guy. Talk to me, Ben, all game? Yeah, all game. You've been fighting that fish for uh, about 25 minutes. Nice job. He's coming right here. Oh, look, he's a little mini. Look at that. Look at that little sail. Hey, well, good job, man. Thank you. Ben. When you have a sailfish showing signs of fatigue, it's important to help prevent it by grabbing it by the bill and erecting the dorsal fin, and then putting the boat in gear, thus forcing water through its gills, giving it plenty of oxygen just before letting it go. Clark, make us proud. Okay. Who wants it? Who wants it? Hey, Pete, you want to tag team this one? Sure. Out here in 170 feet. I still don't even see it. Go for it. It's <laughs> fucking bottom, bro. <laughs> I got him coming pretty good right now. Yeah, there it is. What is it? Oh, yeah. It's a big one. <laughs> big shark. Big shark. It's got very good color to it. Silver. How big is that shark? How many pounds? 400. Easy four. Oh, look at that boy. Oh, Jaws is on the loose. All right, we did it. Very nice. All right. I guess old guys do rule. <laughs> <laughs> The shark's eating the cobia. Go, 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 go. Another cobia, boy. Crazy. Yeah, he's 34. <laughs> hey, that's what we do all day. Just catching cobias, sharks, sailfish. We just can't stop catching quality fish, you know? It's just a, a problem we're having. It's a good thing. After an amazing day of fishing off the coast of Miami, we dropped Ben off and we headed due east. 50 miles to the island of Bimini, located in the Bahamas. A feeling of relaxation comes over you when you cross over the crystal clear, turquoise waters, beautiful beaches, and as always, the promise of good fishing. After clearing customs, and playing tug of war with the local bullies, we were quick to spin the boat around to get out on the water. It's like cheating, man. This Mercury joystick, it's, right? It's cheating. If you ever played video games, you can use these. It's amazing. Hey, where's Kevin Costner? It's Waterworld. That's a dump truck getting dropped off somewhere. I got marks on the screen, too. We're going over some nice fish, Clark. Yeah, I see it. A lot of great edible fish here when you come to the Bahamas. All right, we're on the spot, 26 feet. Clark spends a lot of time in Bahamian waters. So with his wealth of knowledge and good advice, I knew we were in for a great day of fishing. In the grass, right here. Right here, how far? Straight off, 30 feet. 30 feet. Not far enough? Yep, let it sink to the bottom, Pete. Oh boy. I'm getting a little bite on the bottom right now on this shrimp, but it could be anything, huh? Might be yellowtail. He just took it, he ate it. There we go. It's small, it's very small. It got bigger. It got bigger. Come on, baby, be some, 
Be something good. Give me a Bahamian tasty treat. It's a yellowtail. Nice yellowtail. Nice one. Nice. Look at that. Beauty, bro. Whoa, that's dinner, good baby. Job. He's pulling like crazy. It's bigger than the other fish for sure. It is a porgy, a big stud porgy. He's a beauty. Oh my God. These gills are jacked. They got sharp teeth. Look at these teeth. Yeah. Buck teeth. And then you got these little guys here, which look like human Crunchy. teeth almost, which crunch stuff. So these guys are down at the bottom eating crustaceans. And that's one of the reasons why they're so tasty. Fishing in 75 degree weather and calm seas, all while catching delectable fish, doesn't get any better. Or can it? Right. See, we got a we got a bottom fish, mutton. We got a mutton. Nice. Look at that, Clarky. Beautiful, bro. Woo. There you go. My favorite eating fish. We're getting another bite. Mine's gone. Oh yeah, baby. <laughs> this feels like another good fish. The right flavor. This one's on a shrimp. Nice yellow tail to complement the mutton. Two of my favorite eating fish on the planet. Thanks to Clark. Mercury, go boldly. Fishing chaos. Fish smarter, not harder. Low T Center, reinventing men's health care. Yeti, built for the wild. It was time to take in the island and try the local grub. There are taxis available on the island, but we decided to rent a golf cart and tour North Bimini. It's a lovely day in the neighborhood. Won't you be mine? Won't you be my neighbor? So where are we going? Let's look for the little conch shack on the side. Stewart's conch stand. All right, let's get some conch salad. Right on the water and serving the most authentic and delicious conch salad, it's obvious as to how many orders they've served up. You got a bowl of pistols. That's awesome. Yeah? Gotta give it a shot. They seem to work. That's, that's the mojo. Island legends will tell you that eating the conch pistol, a warm, salty, translucent, worm-like tube found inside the conch, will act as an aphrodisiac. Cheers. Did you have your pistol? Nope. It was like a salty, chewy ramen. <laughs> While they prepared the conch salad, I took a moment and signed uncharted waters onto the railing. It's a tradition. There we go. That is good. Very good. It's got onions, green peppers, conch, obviously, tomato. Nice flavor, though. Gotta have it. So the only other tradition we have is to get some bimini bread before we leave. A little bimini bread? Which one do you get? Straight up. Got a lot of sugar in it. Yeah, that's what I like. I think I have conch in my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Not far up the road, we stopped in at Nate's Bakery. Let's get some bimini bread. Let's do it. Wow, look at all this bread. How you doing, sir? Everybody good? good? You must be Nate. Nate. I'm Nate. We needed some bread. We heard you're the man. The sweet coconut roll is the native coconut. Uh-huh. It's roasted in cinnamon, oh, brown, man. brown you're sugar, selling me. nut bread, and fresh ginger. Ooh, Ooh that's bread. intense. That weighs like Thanks. five pounds, I'm man. Pete, I'm giving you a taste of my famous banana cake. On the house, boys. Wow, oh, my God. Thank you. That's good. That is the real hey, deal. Let me take another bite. I love it. Now, I believe him. If some dead body, he's going to go at it twice. No, exactly. <laughs> Trust me. That's beautiful. Isn't that clear water? That's a giant spotted eagle ray. Bimini's pristine waters and peaceful vibe attracts tourists from all over the world. It's a short 50 miles by boat, and if you prefer, you can charter a seaplane or even book a ferry from Miami to get you there in no time, stress-free. Up, up, and away. Now, imagine the perfect setting, overlooking the beach, dining on barbecue chicken, while sipping on your favorite island drink. You got a nice setup here. You couldn't have picked a better location. <laughs> now, it's your choice. Eat it on the spot or take it back on the boat and continue fishing. Honeymoon Harbor is a special place to spend an afternoon. It's an area best known for hand-feeding stingrays and sharks. At first, there were no signs of life. 
but after slapping the surface of the water with bait, we immediately attracted a small nurse shark. A nurse shark right here. It took a few minutes, but I was able to draw her in closer and closer to the boat until she felt that I was of no danger to her. Oh, full nice. suckage. Do you see how fast we sucked that up? All of a sudden, the stingray started to arrive. First a little, then a lot. Look at the size of this ray coming. Big Daddy, Ooh. three of them coming in hot. I decided to get into the water and chum a little bit, and new sharks showed up very quickly. Exciting. All right, here she comes. Very nice. In the meantime, Clark cut up some chunk bait and tossed them out, starting a stingray feeding frenzy, with a couple of them even fighting over the pieces. Come on, bring it in. Back on the boat, it was a continuous feed. It started to feel like I was working the drive through at a fast food restaurant. This is what happens in nature when we constantly visit an area. We are treated to a beautifully choreographed aquatic dance. Salt Life sunglasses, see clearly. Padre Azul, super premium tequila. Life can be fantastic. Baba, the ultimate lifestyle. Mercury, go boldly. Four miles south of Bimini sits the SS Sapona in approximately 20 feet of water. At one time, it was used for military target practice, but now it's a very popular place to snorkel and a great place to climb up and jump into the beautiful clear water of Bimini. Mark, you know what I'm thinking, dude? I'm, I want to climb up that rope ladder and jump off. That's a sketchy. as close as we can. This is gonna be awesome. Just gonna let me out here. Oh, the water's a little chilly today. That water's rushing, huh? Let's see where this thing's attached to. Climbing up the sketchy rope ladder definitely takes a seize the day type of outlook on life. Once you start, turning back is actually more dangerous. It's a good thing that I live my life fully committed to everything I start. No matter how hard it may be, failing is not an option. That is not for the faint of heart. Five, four, three, two, one. Uncharted waters, baby. That's how you do it. That was intense, man. As I was jumping, you don't know what to do with your arms. You're like waving them like your bird wings, like they're going to help, but they don't help. Great job, Pete. With sunset quickly approaching over these Bahamian waters, Clark and I continue to squeeze every bit of sunlight out of the day and catch another nice mutton snapper. Whoa. <laughs> That's a beauty. That's a beauty. A sunset mud. Look at that color. That's a nice one, bro. That's what we've been looking for all day. Patience pays. We're sitting in 43 feet, a natural bottom, nice ledge. Chubs all around the boat. Chubs are huge, huh? Gang of them. With Clark fighting a fish, I see a huge blow up on the surface. Whoa! That's you. Sunset double. What you got over there, Pete? I mean, I'm assuming it's a shark, but he blew up on the surface, ate the live gog, but he's straight up and down. I'm gaining on mine. I got my weight right here. It's a grouper, I think. Big grouper! Get the gap! I'm sorry, I can't get it for you. Oh! Beautiful fish! <laughs> yeah. Oh! Oh, that's a black grouper. Oh, my God, Becky. Dude, he came up on the surface, blew the goggle eye out of the water, 
squat. This has to be 50, 50, 40 pounds. Oh, oh in the face. <laughs> Smack down. Wow, man, what a catch, bro. Thank you so much. Nice job. There's nothing better than ending a trip on a high note. So Clark decided to break out the grill while I filleted the mutton snapper. I got the grill on. I'm going to get the seasoning. And we'll I be have ready. Ziplocs if you want to season it in a bag. Beautiful. After marinating the fish and laying it on the grill, we had a short 10 minute wait for the fish to cook while admiring the amazing sunset sipping on a little Padre Azul. <laughs> perfect. That's unbelievable. It really is. This is the reason you come to Bimini. For additional content and social media, please visit us at unchartedwaterstv.com.